To the next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 5856 in the name of Linda Fabiani on the Scottish Civic Trust, 50 years of protecting Scotland's built heritage. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put with those members who wish to speak in the debate. Please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Linda Fabiani to open the debate. Seven minutes are there about, Ms Fabiani. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I'm really pleased to bring this debate to the Chamber because it's to congratulate uh, the Scottish Civic Trust on their 50th anniversary. And that's 50 years of protecting Scotland's built heritage. And as you get a bit older, 50 years doesn't actually seem that long, but I suppose it is. For some of our members here, it's uh, well almost two lifetimes away for some of them, I suppose. <laughs> But um, it's an organisation with, with a very proud history. It was established in 1967, obviously, and it was a response to the destruction of historic buildings, innumerable historic buildings, and areas of townscape uh, that had evolved uh, over uh, centuries in some cases, and a realisation by, by a lot of people that that was our history and that was our heritage that was in danger of being lost forever. So a lot of volunteers came together and decided that they had to, to do something about that. So it was a focus for debate, but more than that, it was a focus for action. And that's uh, what's really, really important about them. I had a wee look at the timeline of what they achieved, which I've lost. I had it sitting here. Aha, uh -huh, I found it now, so that's useful. Here we are. I had a look at the timeline of, of what they've been doing over that 50 years, and it was actually quite fascinating. Um, the first person who was the first director was a chap called Morris Lindsay, uh, who's sadly no longer with us, but he had a vision, and along with those that were the first tr trustees, he had a vision of civic pride and the ability to see, even at that time, what we all talk about now, about places and placemaking being very, very key to the well-being of individuals and communities. He saw that then, as did those that worked with him. And when you look at what the trusts were in instrumental in over the years, it's very, very important. People don't realise that two of the great big things, the way back 1970, um, they actually held a Conservation of Georgian Edinburgh conference, which was really, really important. And it took place in the assembly rooms in Edinburgh, organised by the Scottish Civic Trust. They also were instrumental in making sure that New Lanark was preserved uh, for posterity and indeed for all of us to enjoy. And people, when they talk about New Lanark, they talk about the, the, leg the legacy of uh, David Dale and, and Robert Owen and uh, the wonderful uh, social initiatives that were taken at that time and exported across the world. Certainly, we should be very, very proud of it. But we have to ask ourselves, if people hadn't had the vision to save the built heritage that was New Lanark, would we, in fact, be as aware as we are of the social history that surrounds that area? I suspect not, because people now visit New Lanark, thriving community of people live there too and work there, but people now visit there and learn without even realising it's learning about what New Lanark stands for. The Civic Trust, they, they started the Doors Open Days. People don't realise that either. They started the, the Photo Arch Competition, that launched in 2007, I remember the first one very well, um, for school children to also be recognising the worth of their environment. And the My Place Awards were launched in 2010. So there's a lot of stuff there, and I suspect that I've surprised people um, by talking about this, people hadn't realised it was a Scottish Civic Trust behind them. And uh, it, it ties in with one of the things I said, that an event that we had to celebrate the 50 years anniversary. We've had it here in the Scottish Parliament and as a chair of the cross-party group on architecture and the built environment, um, I hosted that and it was excellent. And we heard a lot about the work that was done by John Gerrard, who actually spoke at the reception. And John started as a technical officer in 1968 and only retired from the organisation in 2000. What a fantastic man and what a knowledge that we had. And one of the things I said there was what really, really 
um, inspires me about the Scottish Civic Trust and pleases me and makes me really appreciate them is the way they just quietly get on with it. They just care so much about what they do that they just quietly get on with the work and don't look for any reward. So what do they do? Well, their mission is to create places that are attractive, stimulating and enjoyable. Their vision is that Scotland's important and distinctive building and places are understood, cared for and celebrated. And it's not just about ancient buildings, listed buildings, etc. They also look to the future. And, and as someone that represents the new town of Isco Bride, we have a, a couple of listed buildings there that I know that the Scottish Civic Trust are interested in. And many, many years down the line, it may well be that the Scottish Civic Trust will be trying to make sure that these buildings are preserved as well. So it's about the past, it's about the present, and it's about the future. But they also provide leadership for a network of local civic trusts and amenity societies. There's about 120 of them right across Scotland, and I'm sure that there's one near enough to every MSP that's elected here. Um, and I'm also pretty sure that a lot of folk don't actually know they exist. As I said, just quietly getting on with it. They don't blow their own trumpet enough. However, um, I had a look at, it's only a draft, so I couldn't share it with people, um, their draft report that's coming out this year. And I was really, really pleased to see <clears throat> that they're starting to blow their own trumpet a wee bit and that they're recognising the worth of what they do and they want people to know about it. And one of the things that they're planning to launch this year is an annual Civic Day, which is a national celebration of civic pride. And I think that that's an excellent thing to be doing. There's lots of initiatives around. I mean, I think about the Keep Scotland Clean campaign. You know, I think about, you know, having looked at, I have to say, you know, where I'm fortunate to spend a couple of nights a week in Edinburgh when I'm working in Parliament, the mess that was our street last night, absolutely filthy, absolutely mm -hmm. disgusting. And I'm thinking we're finding that too often these days. Um, civic pride is very, very important. People generally care about their environment, even if they don't realise it. And the environment, whether it be the natural environment or the built environment, the places that people have to be in, contribute so much to their well-being. And having a sense of civic pride in their surroundings, I think, is excellent. So, placemaking and flourishing communities go hand in hand. The Scottish Civic Trust have recognised this for 50 years now. I would like everyone here uh, to recognise the work that they do, that work that they quietly get on with to the benefit of us all, to support them, have a look at the National Celebration of Civic Pride that will be coming up on the annual Civic Day. Support Doors Open Day. Support the work that they do. Look at their place in our planning legislation, etc. And support them for the next 50 years. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Ms Fabiani. I call Maurice Corrie to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Mr Corrie, please. <coughs> Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin and, and join, by joining uh, Linda Fabiani in congratulating the Scottish Civic Trust on its 50th anniversary. It is, remarkable, it is a remarkable landmark for any organisation to reach, and one that should rightly be celebrated. And I'm glad that we have the chance today for it to be talked about here in Parliament. Protecting our environment and architecture is important to all our communities whether they be old or new, natural or built. Scots should be very proud of what we have built in this country and defending and seeking to enhance it as a fine and noble cause. One of the main strengths of the Scottish Civic Trust is its local community-based, its voluntary-led groups, and which exists right across the country. In the West of Scotland region, we are lucky enough to have over 15 groups stretching from groups in both Roseneath and Helensburgh in the north of the region to Coinning in the south and in the west groups uh, in, on the island of Arran and the east part of my region in Clydebank and Renfrew. Each of these groups play a vital part in protecting the environment and, of their communities and a vital task because, as the Civic, Scottish Civic Trust correctly states on its website, one of Scotland's most important resources is its environment. These groups can help play a part in influencing the way we, our environment is managed to help ensure that it can be enjoyed for generations to come. 
According to the Scottish Civic Trust, nearly 90% of their groups engage directly with local councils on individual planning applications and also on overall local planning and development plan policy. The Scottish Civic Trust local groups also work to involve and inform the wider public by organising lectures and social events and run awards schemes. Their activities also include working to get improvements to the local area, work with schools and local businesses. Scottish Civic Trusts also coordinate the work of numerous national projects such as, Scottish, as the Scottish Civic Pride Campaign, uh, My Place Awards, My Place Photography Competition and the Scottish Heritage Angel Awards. Another example of this sort of work is a doors open policy and, and the day, uh, which, uh, one of which is planned for this year by the Helensburg Heritage Trust, which is working to hold an event which will see some of the town's most iconic buildings open their doors to the public. This follows on from a successful Doors Open Day which was held in Western Bartonshire last year which saw the doors of various prominent and well-known buildings being opened to the public including St Mungo's Scottish Episcopal Church in Alexandria, Strathleven House in Dumbarton and the gardens at Robin House Children's Hospice in Ballock. The frequency of such events shows that the Scottish public is aware of its heritage and is active in promoting it frequently. If the number of events in my regions is replicated across Scotland, which I understand is the case, the Scottish Civic Trust has undoubtedly fulfilled its duty to promote Scotland's environment and architecture. And in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, once again, I would like to congratulate the Scottish Civic Trust on its 50th anniversary and wish it the very best for the next 50 years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Corey. I call Lewis MacDonald to be followed by Graham Simpson. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer, and I too would congratulate Linda Fabiani on securing this debate. It provides a good opportunity to focus on Scotland's built environment and on how civil society can work with central and local government to achieve the right balance of conservation and development in our crowded urban spaces. It's no coincidence, I think, that this society was founded 50 years ago because in a sense that marked the end of the period of post-war redevelopment which was often done at a pace uh, and in ways that perhaps uh, left uh, heritage quite low down the order of priorities. Having uh, experienced that process and having reached a point where there was clearly I, I think an, a broader recognition of the importance of conservation as well as development, I think the Civic Trust has contributed over that 50 years to a, a rethink uh, and a reprioritization, uh, and particularly uh, to protecting some of our most uh, valuable heritage. Linda Fabiani mentioned George in Edinburgh and New Lanark, but of course there are many other examples uh, around the country where the Civic Trust and those bodies which had helped to bring into being uh, have made that uh, uh, kind of development possible and that change possible. The guiding principle of local empowerment, which underlies the Civic Trust, is I think the right one, recognising that local communities have a special interest in how their local area is conserved or developed or both. And there will not always be consensus on what projects should go forward, as again I suspect most of us know uh, from a local uh, 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 experience, and how they should relate to each other and to existing buildings, what the balance is between conservation and development. But the starting point has to be that local people have the right and the opportunity to express their views, to take an active role, and it is that approach which we celebrate this evening. I would particularly highlight from my own area, the Aberdeen Civic Society, which is a member of the Scottish Civic Trust, and also the Aberdeen City Heritage Trust, which brings together a number of public and third sector organisations with similar objectives in mind. And, and uh, the, the work that those bodies do is very much around uh, getting the balance right and ensuring that while we seek to regenerate our cities, we do it in a way that's sensitive uh, and respectful. Another fundamental principle of the Civic Trust, which uh, has already be, indeed been mentioned, is the importance of raising awareness, a pride and sense of ownership in, uh, of our best historic and public buildings and the annual doors open day. And that uh, is, is, is uh, something coordinated by the Trust, uh, initiated by the Trust, but a good example of the mutual benefits uh, that can arise, both from the, for those responsible for those buildings and for the wider community. I know from my own experience, for example, uh, just how much it is possible for families to learn about their own city uh, from Doors Open Day. Buildings that might be walked past without a second glance turn out to contain much more than meets the eye. Uh, I think, for example, in Aberdeen of St Nicholas the Mither Kirk, a centre of worship and city life for well nigh a thousand years, and of Trinity Hall. Uh, anyone who's 
uh, visited Trinity, Trinity Hall in Aberdeen will see a typical 1970s building, but perhaps not be aware until they go in the door uh, that there's hundreds of years of accumulated uh, uh, heritage from the incorporated trades of the city uh, that lie behind those walls. And so there are benefits to those who visit, but there are also benefits uh, to those operating such buildings from that increased awareness uh, and from that increased uh, audience for what they do. And I think it's worth saying in conclusion that it's not just about the built environment and, and old and ancient buildings, important those, though those are. Aberdeen Civic Society has recently provided awards for the restoration of Duthie Park, a public park in the centre of Aberdeen, which has been restored to a fantastic uh, standard, and for the building of Maggie's Centre in Aberdeen, a modern uh, and purpose-built uh, building right on the edge of the hospital campus at Forrester Hill. So, so the work of the Civic Trust and those organisations which are part of it on a national basis is very much to be commended. I am sure it will continue to grow and develop over the next 50 years in the way it has done over the last. Thank you. I call Graham Simpson. Mr Simpson, please. Thank you. Heritage, a word that either inspires and excites you or leaves you cold. Uh, for me, it's the former. Can I thank Linda Fabiani for bringing this debate to Parliament today? Linda and I come from the same part of Scotland, South Lanarkshire. It is, like many other parts, an area rich in history, but it's a history that's too easy to lose. The motion mentions New Lanark, the cotton mill village which saw workers pay decent wages with housing, healthcare and schooling is a success story of how we can preserve the past, but it's not always the case. The Scottish Civic Trust was established as a response to the destruction of historic buildings. One of their original stated aims was to achieve the elimination of ugliness. I'm not sure that can ever be fully achieved, but we can try. People like buildings in areas with character, but it can be lost in a heartbeat. The Civic Trust is as an umbrella body, umbrella body for local civic societies and local environment groups. There are about 120 of them. And although some comment on planning matters, there's no mandatory requirement for them to be contacted and the trust has no statutory powers. It used to maintain the buildings at risk register for Scotland. Today's debate, uh, but sorry, that's now maintained by Historic Environment Scotland. Today's debate is about celebrating the trust's work, be it their hugely successful Doors Open Days or the Scottish Heritage Angel Awards. That's entirely right because both these schemes shine a light on what's best about heritage and the work to preserve it. Uh, I was also uh, enthused to hear about the annual Civic Day. But I want to make a serious po point about what I see as a gap in our approach to heritage. The Buildings at Risk Register covers listed buildings and buildings in conservation areas. That's fine, but there are many other historic buildings which deserve protection and aren't getting it. This was brought home to me recently when my local pub, the Stuartfield Farm, which dates from the 1800s, was closed and permission given to demolish it while an application to build new houses is considered. There's nothing wrong with the building, or there wasn't until the roof tiles were removed and nobody nearby wants to see it go. It's part of the heritage of our hometown, East Kilbride, but the council won't do anything to save it. It's not listed and it's not in a conservation area. It could be one of many that got away. So my point is this, someone, somewhere, maybe the Scottish Civic Trust should be able to at least put a temporary halt to such wanton vandalism of our history. If that means beefing up what they can do, then so be it. And maybe there's an opportunity when the planning bill comes before this parliament. Scottish Civic Trust Director John Peelan told my office that MSPs should be campaigning about buildings in their own area and bring it to the attention of the Scottish Civic Trust and buildings at risk register. I have, and I urge others to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Um, I now call on Fiona Hislop to close the Government Cabinet Secretary. Seven minutes or thereabouts, please.
Uh, Presiding officer, in closing today's debate, I would like to first of all thank Linda Fabiani for securing the debate and her heartfelt tribute to this most important of organisations at the heart of civic life in Scotland. And the motion rightly highlights New Lanark and the Scottish Civic Trust's role in helping to save the site in the 1970s. From a tale of dilapidation and ruin, New Lanark is now one of our six World Heritage Sites in Scotland. And it was inscribed as a World Heritage Site in 2001 and is seen as a historic environment success story. Of course, the Scottish Civic Trust has done much to contribute to the care, promotion and understanding of our rich built heritage since the organisation's birth in 1967. As Cabinet Secretary with responsibility for the historic environment, I've had the pleasure of seeing for myself the sterling work that the Trust undertakes on behalf of the people of Scotland. And through the Trust's core activities, the organisation does a huge amount to raise the profile of Scotland and its rich built environment, both at home and abroad. And I'd like to say a few words on those activities in due course. Firstly, however, I would like to personally thank the Civic Trust for its contribution to the development and implementation of Our Place in Time, Scotland's first ever strategy for the historic environment. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge the contribution of the Trust Director, John Peel, into that process. The Trust was one of a, a number of partners who worked in collaboration to develop a series of shared strategic priorities for Scotland's historic environment. And I'm also pleased to be able to report that the Trust will continue to help deliver our national shared objectives for the historic environment, not only through its own activities, but also through its membership of the volunteering working group, which has been set up under our Place and Times Refresh Strategic Framework. And the group will consider how best to demonstrate and promote the value of volunteering to the historic environment and establish mechanisms of engagement for the individual, communities and organisations. And I look forward to seeing the fruits of the group's deliberations in due course. And I'm also pleased that the Scottish Government has been able to support the work of the Scottish Civic Trust through the Agency of Historic Environment Scotland, which has provided voluntary sector funding to the Trust for many years and is currently the organisation's main funder, providing about 50% of their income. Historic Environment Scotland is currently committed to a three-year funding award of over £305,000 to the Trust to deliver three specific projects, some of which have already been mentioned today in the debate. The Doors Open Day, My Place Photography Competition and the Civic Pride Campaign. The Doors Open Day, as we've heard, is Scotland's largest free annual architectural event. It's coordinated nationally by the Scottish Civic Trust and is part of Europe European Heritage Days alongside Scottish Archaeology Month, which is coordinated by Archaeology Scotland and also funded through the Historic Environment Scotland Voluntary Sector Fund. And I'm sure many of you have heard have taken the opportunity provided by the scheme to visit historic properties and other buildings across Scotland that are not usually open to the public. It's been a hugely successful initiative and the figures that we have are impressive. The uh, Historic Environment Audit for 2016 reported that in 2015, 25 local authorities participated in Doors Open Day, over 1,000 buildings were open to the public and over 210,000 visits were recorded and the event was supported by over 5,000 volunteers. So these figures demonstrate clearly the level of interest of the people of Scotland that they have in their own built environment. And it's hugely encouraging to note how many people are willing to give of their time freely to ensure the success of Doors Open Day. And I think the Chamber has expressed its thanks to them. The My Place Photography Competition, the Trust My Place Photography Competition, has also been remarkably successful. The competition is a built environment photography project for primary and secondary age sc school children throughout Scotland. And it encourages uh, children to look at the heritage and the places they live through the medium of photography. In 2017, over 500 young people took, took part from 24 school schools in 14 local authority areas is a great level of uptake. Uh, excellent example, fantastic photography. Um, and I usually have to fight with the local government minister to see who gets to go to the competition to present the awards. Um, the Civic Pride campaign that we've heard of, um, encouragement is also at the core of the Scottish Civic Trust Civic Pride campaign. And here funding helps the trust to carry out a range of functions to um, uh, foster and develop a sense of civic pride. 
in our towns and cities. And at the heart of the campaign is the Scottish Civic Trust established network, referred to by Maurice Corey and Lewis MacDonald, of over 100 affiliated local groups across Scotland, which represent uh, an important part of our civic society. And again, thousands of volunteers from all walks of life across the, the country. And with the indulgence, presiding officer, I would like to, to talk about Linlithgow Civic Trust, who I spoke to only on Friday. Uh, they are wise, they are uh, passionate, and they are determined in promoting uh, the town in which they work, in which I live. Um, the town of Linlithgow is much older than East Kilbride. Uh, it has different challenges. Um, but I think it's quite important to remember that uh, what they do is they help us understand our heritage, but they also look to a sustainable future um, and are involved in planning terms uh, in terms of how that town itself can develop for the future. So we shouldn't always think about the Civic Trust about being at the past. It's certainly about the present, but it's also about the future. So the volunteers that take part in all these um, different affiliated groups celebrate and record the local um, his heritage. Uh, and the Civic Pride campaign is uh, aiming to recognise and support that work of the local civic groups and amenity societies across Scotland to help them foster links. And they think that um, that will, will be something that will be a benefit, not just to individuals, but also with that network of uh, association of civic pride. So, of course, uh, in commenting on these examples, there's a whole lot of other activities where the Scottish Civic Trust play a critical award, uh, cr critical role such as, as referred to, the Scottish Heritage Angel Awards. Um, you might want to remind all your constituents, uh, the MD who wants to put nominations, that the nominations close on August the 11th. Um, they've got, also got the My Place Awards, as well as the Trust's own heritage consultancy service work to reflect on the activities involved in the Trust. And if we look at all these in the rounds, I'm sure, as we've heard, we can all agree that the Trust provides a great service to the people of Scotland. And indeed, it's an exemplar for us all in relation to the collaborative and partnership working that they're involved in. They facilitate and encourage volunteering across the country. They engage with and inspire new audiences who in turn often develop a deep-rooted enthusiasm for our built environment. So, presiding officer, in closing, I'd like to congratulate the Scottish Civic Trust on its 50th anniversary, say a big thank you to the organisation and all its employees, supporters, friends and, and, and volunteers who've helped the Trust achieve so much since its foundation in 1967. Thank you. That concludes the debate. I close this meeting of Parliament.